Hi, and welcome to Answers News for March the 7th, 2019. And um, I'm back from vacation, so that's where I was. Last welcome week. back. I, know. I was in Florida. Yay. It was 80 degrees. Oh, no. You know what I came back to? Snow. <laughs> Just saying. Snow, Snow, a little bit of ice, yeah. and probably yeah. 10 degrees. You're missing. This is all Fahrenheit, of course. I'm missing the warmer weather, but it's good to be back. And um, as you'll see today, and, and pretty much for the rest of the month, um, we will have a mixture of both the A and the B team, since part of the A and the B team are in other countries um, right. this month. We're and calling that the convoluted team. Yeah. The C team. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's the A plus B team right now, or the C team, or whatever you want to call it. So we have a wonderful studio audience with us today, so make yourselves known. Let's hear Let's it. Hear Come on. There you go. Yeah. All right. So we're gearing up here at the museum. It's um, spring break time, and so this is when our really busy season begins um, here in the next few weeks. So we'll be seeing a lot of people um, really come through those doors. So it's actually kind of a nice time to visit right now because... <laughs> Yeah. Not quite as crowded as it will be here shortly. So. All right. So. All right. Well, um, we're going to get started with just a couple of fun items while people get on and tell us um, that they're here. So I'm watching Ken Ham's Facebook page. She's watching YouTube. Gabriella, by the way, this is Dr. Gabriella Haynes and Hi. Bodie Hodge. Yep. And he's watching... What are you watching? The, You're watching Answers the, in Genesis Yeah, I think it's the Facebook Answers page. in Genesis okay. page, at least, and I think. And I'm Georgia Purdom, <laughs> and so... All right, so our first article, um, I like, I picked this one because I thought it was A little bit fun. of fun with this one. Yeah, tortoise not seen for 113 years is found on the Galapagos Islands. And so, <laughs> so I visited there back in, oh gosh, I can't, 2011. Um, I got the opportunity to visit the Galapagos Islands. And so there are many different species of tortoises. And it's been hard to maintain um, certain species populations because mm -hmm. there's a lot of feral cats and dogs and things like that, and they tend to eat the eggs. And so um, it's been difficult to do that. And uh, there was one called Lonesome George uh, a few years ago. He was the only member of his species, and sadly he died um, without mm -hmm. reproducing. And so they found this one on Fernandino, which is one of the um, uninhabited islands. And so uh, they have to do some more testing to make sure. But she, unfortunately, does not have a male. Um, so she may be the last of her species, unless they can find a male. I, I say we name it Georgia. No, it's not going to oh, be come on. Some Georgia or something. Not my name. <laughs> Let's name it Georgette or something. Georgette. Like that. Not my name. So. <laughs> so we'll see, but it's kind of cool. Apparently, tortoises can store, female tortoises can actually store male sperm uh, for a, a period of years or maybe even longer. So they're maybe hoping uh, that maybe some of that is in there and that, that she can still produce eggs, but um, uh -huh. that remains to be seen. So kind of cool. Kind of yeah. something you wouldn't expect to find. That is kind of neat. Especially since they live to be so old. It was funny, before we started the show, somebody walked through here and saw that picture, and they misread it. They thought a tourist was not seen for 113 <laughs> years. And they had to yeah. read it again. Like, that would oh. be really bad. Okay, yeah. That would be really sad. All right, so, so people you here. wanted this article. Oh, you know, I saw this one. I was pretty excited about it. Uh, Cadbury, uh, known for their chocolates. Uh, you know, they're kind of a, more of a worldwide... Uh, chocolate company. We see a bit of it here in the United States. They're famous for the Cadbury cream eggs and uh, caramel eggs and things like that. And yes, I say caramel. I don't know what everybody else says, but <laughs> yeah, Cadbury is hiring chocolate taste tester uh, to work for $14 an hour. And you know, you know, I don't know how many hands are, <laughs> hands are going up in the audience you, already. Yeah, yeah. You know? might not see I'll me hope. the next Answers <laughs> News. You know, I, I thought about this job. You know, I would love this job. I really would. You know, yeah, this one's a little more creamy. This is more dark. You know, I, I could have a heyday, but I could just see myself after a week, too. You know, <laughs> after eight-hour days of eating all this chocolate. No, I don't want any more chocolate, please. Yeah. No. Yes. Too much right, of a good thing, probably. Yeah, I'm sure they rotate people through and so forth. Yeah, forth, you, you have to because maybe you can just keep the same taste. I don't know when kind of develop something. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I don't, what, know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But it's it's a sweet job. It is a sweet job. Good on you. <laughs> oh, there uh -huh. we go. There you go. No, do not do that. <laughs> we can't have two people doing puns. Oh, yes, here. we can. At the same but, time. Yeah, buddy, buddy, Bodie. <laughs> <laughs> Bodie's known for his puns, so that's why we're making yeah, fun of Yeah, it's a lot of people coming on YouTube here. Someone from Slovakia, is how you say in English. Um, Moscow, and um, a lot of people from different places Good. here. I have Very, Ireland. That's awesome. Yeah, Ireland Texas. and South Asia, where it's 1 a.m., yeah. so they're up watching CNY this. Wow, really late so, at Yeah, night, I mean, we've got so. people all over. Yep. All, all right. right, 
So our first article, Trans Athletes Make Great Gains, Yet Resentment Still Flares. So this is an article talking about uh, Martina Navratilova, who was a famous tennis player back in the day. And she is a, um, she has come out as lesbian like quite a few years, years ago, ago now. But she is now speaking out um, actually against there being transgender athletes. So this is when a, let's say, especially in the case of when a male um, says, well, I want to be a female and then I want to participate in female um, sports. Well, what's the problem with that? You know, it's a huge problem because he's, he's a guy. I mean, regardless of what he says he is, he's a guy and mm -hmm. he's going to have an unfair advantage against the women. Right. And, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, people in that situation, they're taking drugs, they're taking hormones and things like that. You know, in any, any competitive sport, somebody starts taking drugs, you know, for something, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're suspended and all sorts right. of issues. Exactly. But, but this one here, you're praised for it, mm -hmm. um, which is uh, quite interesting. But it also shows the tension uh, even within, say, the LGBT movement. Mm -hmm. You know, you've right. got transgender, which actually doesn't really believe that male and female really exist because you can transition between them. And then the L and the G, lesbian, gay, that sort of thing. You know, they say that there is a distinction between males mm -hmm. and females and uh, looking for same-sex attraction. So ultimately, they would really oppose each other. Right. And you're starting to see some of that friction here, even within their own. Yeah, definitely. And, and one of the things that was interesting as I was, as I was reading the article, it, the, I think they're quoting some... No, they're quoting uh, Navratilova, mm -hmm. actually. She said, a man can decide to be a female... And I was like, no, a man can't. A man can mm -hmm. pretend to be a female, but he can't actually decide to become a female because regardless of the hormone treatments he mm -hmm. takes or the surgeries he has, he will still be a male. <laughs> um, just yeah. someone that may look like a female, but definitely right. not be a female. That is the difference. And it's very know. hard for a man to look like a female because there, there are some things that are just male um, yeah. features. You know, part of it's genetics. The genetics, change yeah. That you cannot part. change anything yeah. like the muscles, the bones, as right. we were talking before. Right. Um, the show, uh, even if you take any mm -hmm. um, hormones, that's mm -hmm. not going to change. Yeah, that bones, would include heart, muscle. lungs, things uh -huh. like that too. Yeah, yeah. capacities yeah. are mm -hmm. huge. Your capacity, yeah. yeah, it's not going to change at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I find, you know, like, a, like she's saying, you take all the hormones you want, female hormones you want, it won't change some basic fundamental things that will give you, that will give a male an advantage against a female. So, and I think it's sad. I, you know, it's sad for all the female athletes that are working really, really hard um, and doing their best to achieve the highest they can in their sport. And then they're put up against men. Yeah. Right. There's also a case of um, a player well, from Brazil. Um, there were um, there's some um, article from Canada, and now we found one from Brazil here with some information. Right. Um, and she, I checked um, her, and she started playing when she in 1989, and she's one of the best players mm -hmm. in Brazil. And now um, mm -hmm. Tiffany Abreu, she's a transgender, and she's just, she she started in 2017. Yeah. You know, and it's just like someone works so hard mm -hmm. for so many years mm -hmm. and then someone else comes less than two years and it's already. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently, you know, one of the things that's mentioned in here is uh, there was a Canadian mountain biker um, who was transgender that won the national title. And the person who was second place was Danica Schroeder. And apparently when she got up for the medal ceremony, she wore a T-shirt provided by her boyfriend that said 100 percent pure yeah. woman champ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well. So yeah, so I hope that yeah. people start to see, you know, how <laughs> the problems with this. You know, it's all about being politically correct, but what does that ultimately lead to, and what is that going to? You know, right. we have this problem with the Olympics coming up, and, and yeah. you know, it's and, and all this is, you know, consequences of a secular worldview. You mm -hmm. know, when you start with God and His Word, there's male and female, and you can follow through that. And cultures have done that all around the world. You know, borrowing from the Bible. But, you know, in people's defiance of God and his word, they're, they're open to anything and they're right. trying anything. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this, is, this, this yeah. is what you should expect in a secular worldview, as sad mm -hmm. as it is. Yeah. All right. Our next article. And so these articles kind of all relate to one another. Bioethicists um, block transgender puberty even if parents say no. So this was an article published in the American Journal of Bioethics. Uh, by a bioethicist at the Arizona, at Arizona State University who basically say that children, and it doesn't say what age, it doesn't seem to be an age, but that they have the right to have their puberty blocked medically um, and that the state 
needs to step in and make sure that happens, even if the parents won't allow it to happen. Yeah. They're always trying to put the kids against their parents. Right. You know, like, you yeah. can decide whatever you want. Your parents doesn't need to tell uh, you um, if you can do or not. And it's just so sad because the parents that take care, I'm pregnant now. I don't know if you can see from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, the parents that take care of the kid invest time, money, right. everything. Now, everybody wanna, um, they want to oh, your kid, hospital, doctors, mm -hmm. um, school. state, school. Mm -hmm. Except for the bills. They still want uh, the yeah, parents to pay for all that. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. We pay the bills. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that says here in the article, it says, besides, blocking puberty is itself a harm. It should be seen as an unethical human experiment, the long-term health consequences of which cannot be known. Absolutely. I, I, you know, there is no long-term studies that have ever been done to show the effects of blocking puberty in children. I mean, we do not know what this is going to lead to 20 years from now. And I have a very strong feeling that we're going to look at this 20 years from now and just be aghast at what we have done to these children. Um, and so that, that's the... We would yeah. not do this in anything else. I mean, when you think about this, how yeah. strong the FDA is and how they don't allow certain things to go through, and yet we allow experimentation on children. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> because the state wants to take ownership of the yeah. children. I mean, <clears throat> that's essentially what slavery is. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. someone yeah. takes ownership of someone that mm -hmm. they're not supposed to, I mean, that's, uh, that's terrible, you know, when yeah. you see that. It's really sad to see all that happening and um, parents just not being able to do anything. Right, and they, and they say the reason that they're, they're claiming that the parents don't have, or that the state should step in above the parents is because the parents are causing psychological harm to the child, which that psychological harm could lead to suicide so, in the child. So essentially they're claiming they're doing this for the health and well-being of the child. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're equating it essentially with a, a person who burns their child or a person who And that's just a straw child. man fallacy is all right. that is. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's sad, but Take that's Take it to another stream doing. just to... Yeah. Yep. Okay, so this next article goes right along with it because the thing is, you know, that's, that's an article, okay, in a, in a journal and it's hypothetical and all of that. It's not hypothetical, it's real. Um, doctors warn dad they don't need parental consent to inject daughter 14 with male hormones. And so this is um, a case um, where in, in Canada where basically <laughs> this young lady... Um, at school decided that she wanted to be a male. And so she was going by a male name and male pronouns. They never let her parents know. And then she decided she wanted to um, have, met, you know, block puberty and have male hormones. And then the parents, you know, got informed about this, got told about this, and the, at least the dad is trying to block it. Yeah, trying to, but imagine really this working. with something else. I mean, how many things can we, you know, can kids go do without their parents' permission? Can they go to a doctor's office? Can they get benefits? Yep. Can they do all drive? This? Can they drive? <laughs> can they can they vote? <laughs> you know, I mean, there's all sorts of things that you can't do anything without your parental permission. Yep. Right. And yet they're saying, oh no, you don't need parental permission for this. But, Something that is going to change your life forever. Right. Yes. Bingo. Well, yeah, I, that's I, okay. Well, well, think about this with something else. What if, okay, because here's the situation. They're going up saying, okay, we don't need parental permission to do something uh, to this underage child. What if, say, somebody said, hey, you know what, a uh, 14, 13 year old girl or something, if somebody wanted to go have sex with them, we don't need your parents' permission. Right. They don't need to mm -hmm. know. I mean, what would they do to somebody like that? They'd throw yeah. them in jail. That's mm -hmm. what they would do. Mm -hmm. But you say, move over and say, oh, well, it's just sex hormones, that sort of thing. They cannot be consistent it, on. It's inconsistent, and yet they're doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and one of the things, too, that this issue really brings up, and something that the father, because he's had to fight this in court, basically, to keep his daughter from receiving these sex hormones, um, the father said, it's not, to me, a transgender issue, noting that it's a clear violation of his rights as a parent. It really is a parental rights issue because the state is stepping in and saying, mm -hmm. we decide, not you as the parent. So, that, so they're trying to make it look like it's a transgender issue, issue but yeah. really what it is is it's yeah. a parental rights issue. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, that's yeah. what they want. It's an authority issue. Yes, th that's what they want everybody else to know. Just like, oh, so you being against that, you're transphobic. Yeah. And, and the thing is, too, and one of the things, and I, I keep thinking about this, especially as we, we're coming up on the women's conference where we're going to mm -hmm. be talking about a lot of these sexuality issues, and one of the things I keep running into is it's just amazing to me how, you know, 
transphobia, or not transphobia, but this gender dysphoria used to be a mental disorder. It's dysphoria for a reason, right? It's wrong. It's something you're thinking wrong. But yet, you know, and every other dis, so to speak, we <laughs> treat people. We try to help people. We say there's something wrong with your thinking. Not with this one, right? But this is different from all the rest. We, we actually promote it and encourage it. And to the point where even this, this father has actually lost his case now in Canada with the Supreme Court of British Columbia. They say, nope, you can't stop this. She has a right to have these hormones and to be able to transist, to supposedly transist to a male. Yeah, there's one case we were talking before the show uh, about a man that he, he thought that he would be happier mm -hmm. being blind, but he could see. So what he did, he just put like chemical in his eyes to make him blind. And uh, everybody else would look at that as like, this is, it's a, it's a disorder, disorder yeah, you know, right. it's a mental disorder you, we need to treat. But um, it seemed, I, I, I don't know what's, um, well, we know what's wrong. <laughs> right. It's sin, right. yeah. But sometimes it's just very sad to see all of those things happening. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're fearfully and wonderfully made by God, and we're made in his image to be who, whoever that we are to be. I mean, whether it's we're male or female, clearly the Bible designates that as the only two genders and sexes that there are. And we're made in his image, you know, to reflect him. So when we damage or hurt ourselves or try to be something that he didn't create us to be, we're going against that, really. Mm -hmm. We're going against our, our very maker. So... This, so the father is continuing to fight this, and he's going to take it all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada to try to keep his daughter uh, from, from receiving these treatments, and honestly, just to keep his daughter his daughter right. <laughs> and have the rights of a parent. They even said yeah. that if he does not address her by her male name and by her male pronouns, that that's considered a violation of, um, that's considered family violence. He will be considered guilty of family violence in Canada. And don't think that just because this is in Canada, it's not coming here because it is. C going um, everywhere. Yeah. 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 Well, it's already here yeah. 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 in many ways. So, okay. Uh, next, on to a little bit of science here. Designing new proteins could lead to cancer treatment. So this is about um, some scientists who are trying to figure out basically how to make protein sequences, fold them up, and have them fight cancer. Okay. So that's a very, very good thing to do. But somehow, it has to do with evolution. Or at least oh, they, they, try to to make, they yeah. have to try to make that tie-in with evolution. Yeah, one of, one of the things it says right here in the first sentence, scientists are attempting to mimic what took millions of years of evolution to refine. And get this, here's what they say. The creation of new proteins. Yeah. yeah. So it, they have to use the word creation to define evolution there. Mm, yep. Fascinating. And it's not, it, it's not what evolution took millions of years to refine. Right. It's rather God's instantaneous creation <laughs> That's right. um, of these proteins, of these amino acids, all of these things. And they yeah. even say creating a protein from scratch. They're not creating from scratch no. because they know what a protein is right. and what it takes mm -hmm. to a protein to be, right. like how right. it's formed. Mm -hmm. So they're not creating anything. They already have the idea what protein is, right. and they're just trying to mimic. Yeah, apparently there's tens of thousands of proteins in the human body, so it's not Probably. like they don't have yeah. examples to look at. Yeah, so. so I mean, it's good, and they actually have, and so this is like the really nerdy Olympics they actually have for <laughs> scientists. They actually will give them a sequence, and then they have to try to figure out using the tools they have how it folds. And and how it folds determines what it does and its structure. And so they, this particular um, group of scientists, they've won like every year for a really long time. And, the, and they, they say, well, the reason we're winning is because we're, we're using wisdom provided by evolution, right? Because we, we, we look at what they give us and we compare it to other proteins that have a similar, similar evolutionary origin. No, you look at it and you compare it to other proteins that have a similar design. Right. Mm -hmm. right? That's a reification fallacy. Yeah. Yeah. Wisdom provided by evolution. Evolution doesn't have wisdom. Nope. It's, a, it's a proposed model. That's not a scientific <laughs> statement. Right. It, even later on, it says evolution can tell us a lot. And actually, evolution doesn't speak. There's, yeah. there's evolutionists that speak. Yeah. You see, that's just a common fallacy. If evolution people, is people talking to it. you, run. Because that's right. something <laughs> is... Seek counseling. Yeah, yeah, go see... Yeah, counseling. Well, and it's all about how do we interpret run. the evidence in light of our right. worldview. You know, clearly, you can look at this article. Right. I mean, they're clearly looking at it from evolutionary origin. But I can look at it as a geneticist and as a creationist and say, well, I see the 
amazing design, and so they're mm -hmm. using this design and trying to compare, you know, make make other proteins based off proteins we yeah. already know exist that were designed by God to try to help us in a fallen world. That's a good thing, but it has yeah. nothing to do with evolution. That's right. We're looking at the same evidence. That's the point. We're looking at the same evidence. The difference is the interpretation. You know, as Christians, we're starting with God and His Word uh, to look at and interpret that evidence. Yes. And, you know, out in the secular world, they're, they're ignoring the Bible, yep. and they're trying to look at it from a host of different perspectives that right. tend to fall short over and over again. Mm -hmm. Somebody on here says, um, they said, oh, cool, it's the B team or the Bodhi team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, come on. No, don't call it the Bodhi team. They'll get a big head about that. No, I don't know. Yeah. My head's awful tiny. It needs to yeah. get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> All right, abortion activists. We should celebrate abortions like we celebrate babies with baby showers. Okay. Cultural um, death. Just when you think it could not get any more horrible... It actually does. And this is um, Amanda Palmer, who's an American singer, and she released a single called Voicemail for Jill. And basically, it's a song all about Jill having an abortion and her feeling bad that nobody is there to celebrate it with her. Yeah, they want to have death day celebrations. Yeah. You know, would they do this for any other murderer who kills someone? No. Oh, hey, congratulations, you're a murderer. I mean, mm -hmm. It, it, it's just terrible. It reminds me of Proverbs 8.36. All those who um, hate God love death. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what it's called, you know, what, what they want to call um, good is actually evil, right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're making mm -hmm. that change. What is yeah. evil is good and what is good is evil. And she even say that um, abortion is the hardest decision and also a grief. Um, a baby shower, it's not a hardest decision, neither a grief. So you mm -hmm. cannot compare, they, they both. Apples to oranges, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, you cannot compare them. They're mm -hmm. totally different um, and, things. And she yeah. talks about wanting to have a party for this woman and bring, you know, wine and cake and, you know, flowers. And I thought, yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's what you would bring to something like this because really abortion is, is sacrificing a child on the altar of self, yes. right? It's all about you um, mm -hmm. and what you want. And so, um, yeah. and and so that, so it's sad. And I think what she's really reacting to, I mean, I don't know her personally, but is how society typically thinks about abortion, that it's wrong, that it's bad, you know, or at least how Christians think mm -hmm. about it. So we need to react against that. And this should be something that is celebrated, um, not something that is vilified. Yeah, it's interesting in those lyrics, kind of what you were just pointing out here. No one's going to celebrate you. No one's going to bring you cake. No one's going to shower you with flowers. The doctor won't congratulate you. Uh, no one on that pavement's going to shout at you uh, that your heart matters or your heart also matters. Yeah. Well, it's like, hold it. Why, why is she so concerned about her own heart when she really didn't care about the heart that was beating mm -hmm. inside yeah. her? Yeah. It's just sad. But we right. see, we continue to see things. That, and what it is, is it's really wanting a normalization, right, of abortion, of all of these yeah. things. And see, abortion is because of sin. You know what I mean? Cultures all around the world, all the way back into ancient times, sacrificed their children. Uh, because of a humanistic belief, a belief right. in yourself, not mm -hmm. following what God has to say. You know, and there's hosts of pagan beliefs and even evolution in, uh, in, in today's modern uh, vernacular is a form of paganism. And we see people still sacrificing children to the altar of self. That's yeah. what this is. is and, you know, so there's a connection even between abortion, between transgender, between um, all these different uh, supposed scientific arguments for evolution. We see it over and over again. And that's one of the reasons we put out the, the book Glass House, which right. you, you were involved in. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been involved in it. Ken Ham and I are the general editors. And we're looking at a lot of the top arguments that evolutionists have been trying to make to right. convince generations now of an evolutionary worldview. They look at things like horse evolution and whale evolution and, and did dinosaurs evolve into birds, those types of things, as well as even common claims like, it, you know, when it comes to genetics between humans right. and chimps, are they really 98%? Right. We're evaluating all that in here. Mm -hmm. And you know what, it's, this is a powerful uh, book. Uh, I, when it was first released, it was actually a number one bestseller on Amazon in awesome. Apologetics. So That's we were great. pretty excited about that. But the book That's is why we did it. <laughs> we want lots of people to yeah. buy it so they understand those arguments and can talk intelligently right. about those And things. it's really important, especially when we deal with these types of uh, news yeah. items. Yeah. Okay. Earliest signal ever. Scientists find relic <clears throat> neutrinos from one second after the Big Bang. Now, if you read that title, it would appear that they have actually discovered... <laughs> these neutrinos, right? Because that's what it says. It says, and, and even in the article, it said there's incontrovertible, okay, um, evidence of this. 
Um, it's real, and it agree agrees with the Big Bang. So there we go. Big Bang is proven. You know, titles don't always uh, yeah, work very well. Not at all. <laughs> nope. You know, uh, I, I talked to our astronomer, Dr. Danny Faulkner, about this, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, I was just asking him. In fact, as he's written something up that's probably going to be on the website here fairly soon. Um, guess what? They, they didn't find any neutrinos. Right. Not, not even one. So, you know, it, it's not that. Now, we, we've been able to detect neutrinos, but not anything from the supposed Big Bang. Um, uh, you know, as I talked to Dr. Faulkner, what we need to do, we need to be very careful about the headlines. Sometimes somebody will put a headline up that makes you think something. I mean, we see that all the mm -hmm. time with missing links. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Suppose a missing link found, and then later on you actually read the article and you're like, oh, they didn't find <laughs> anything. Not, not anything. Well, same sort of thing here. They, none were detected. But they're not actually looking for neutrinos. What they're, what they're doing is they're trying to look for indirect evidence that there right. might be neutrinos out there. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the second instance where they think they might have found some indirect evidence of something. So from a Christian perspective, you know, thinking you know, in terms of God creating everything in six days, um, are neutrinos a big deal? No, they're not. We expect them to. But that's the problem. They, they say, well, you know, in a Big Bang model, you have to have them, so therefore we find them, therefore Big Bang's true. But here's the problem with that. If you actually think carefully about that, that's actually an affirming the consequent fallacy. Uh, let me put it like this. If Big Bang were true, they expect to find evidence for neutrinos. They find evidence for neutrinos, therefore Big Bang is true. That's actually an affirming the consequent fallacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you read through the whole article, m most people, you know, they don't just step back and look at the big picture. That's the big problem with this. Yeah, they found some cool stuff, but definitely not a major support for Big Bang. And, and, well, and again, and how do you form. interpret the evidence in light of your world? Well, it is. Mm -hmm. It's model dependent. And that's, yeah. that, that's what right. you run into. So, right. yeah. yeah, not a big deal. We'll have an article on it soon from our astronomer. Yep. So you can read more about it there. All right. Neanderthals walked upright just like the humans of today. Now, from a creationist perspective, totally not shocking. Like, we already could have figured mm -hmm. this out because Neanderthals are fully human. Wow. So they have a, a back that's like a human. <laughs> Go figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's not a whole lot to say, really, about this. I mean, yeah. they, they found more vertebrae, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on Neanderthal. They've analyzed them. And, oh, hey, look at this. It's, it's like a human. Yeah, they first thought that um, they were not. They didn't have a back like human. And they conclude that from a few isolated vertebrate only. So now that they found more... So used to think they hunched the, over? Yeah. Like this. <laughs> They're not like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, now that they found a fossil that it's more complete, mm -hmm. they... They might have had great posture. Yep. Mm -hmm. We should go around and say, hey, well, you need to have better Neanderthal posture. <laughs> you know, well, and, they, and the reason they always thought they were hunched over, I mean, some of it was based on the little fossil evidence that they did have, but they think they're cavemen, you know, prehistoric, primitive, you know, that's how they would talk about them. So they're all hunched over, more like their ape-like, you know, ancestor mm -hmm. or whatever. But then the more and more, and, and we have articles like this, it seems like about once a week when it comes to Neanderthals or even Homo erectus or yeah. some of these other ones. They're fully human. They, they, they're intelligent. They buried their dead. They, they had clothes, tools. You know? They had clothes. They had jewelry. They had everything we would associate. They made flutes. Which right, is kind of cool, musical yeah. instruments with Brilliant. humans today. So this isn't really surprising from a biblical worldview, but it does astound the evolutionists, so to speak, because they wouldn't expect that. Yeah, I was pretty excited about this. You know, a little side note, Neanderthals uh, were found in the Neander Valley in Germany. It was the first time. That's where the name comes from, right. Neanderthal mm -hmm. or Neanderthal. And uh, actually, that particular property was owned by a wonderful Christian man who used to write hymns. Huh. Uh, you'll come meander. Cool. And so I always thought that was funny. One of the, the most famous supposed missing links for all uh -huh. these years <laughs> was named after a wonderful Christian hymn writer. So. Uh -huh. but. Okay. NASA was able to recreate the origins of life, and the results are shocking. Once again, if you read the title, <laughs> boy, that sounds great. <laughs> yeah. They uh, are no, shocking because they, they didn't find anything. They didn't find anything. Okay. So what they tried to do was recreate, supposedly, the origins of life by trying to figure out how things were right, right on early earth and so then they they do that and they were able to to recreate or able to um, produce one amino acid and one hydroxy acid okay okay so they're not even close okay <laughs> amino acids aren't even close to proteins which are the building blocks well yeah and you exactly. got to have 19 other amino acids if you want to produce and you got to put them together right oh, it's yeah. just crazy so they're not even close. I sent this uh, to uh, a chemist that I know who's an expert 
mm-hmm. in, in this type of stuff. In fact, he wrote our chapter on the original life. In right, the Dr. Alan book. White, yeah. And, uh, you know, he wrote back something really simple, like, boy, they haven't come very far, you know, in 50 years or so. You yeah. know, that's one of the big problems is original life. In a secular viewpoint, how do you get life? And, you know, one of the things they keep wanting to do is they want to say, well, maybe it didn't start here on Earth because it's astronomical to try to get it. Maybe it was somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Maybe they did it on a different planet. And they even hint to that here, in here uh, on this uh, next page. Oh, and you can understand how likely this could have occurred on another planet. Mm-hmm. You see, that's panspermia. You know, it has to come from another planet, and they try to bring it here. But all they're doing is pushing the problem somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't help. You still they're not run solving into the it. problem, um, sending the problem somewhere. That's right. Yeah. It's just not at all. Yeah, I just said because uh, they say that uh, complex organic molecules, they're blocks for life, but a baby, right. it's not a life. Right. Yeah. That's, that's that, so that true. That is funny. This Origin is... of life, and they're appealing to an amino acid. We got a baby right. growing, right. they want to say yeah. it's not. Yeah, that's what's amazing. That's and what's it. shocking. Yep. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. And just yep. the idea that you can even, even if you have, if you have water and or, you know, amino acids um, or in heat, that doesn't give you life, okay? That just typically gives you a mess, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> it doesn't funny. give you life. You, you know, you read the headline, you think, wow, they found something, right. you know, but you read in here, one of the, the things says, while it's important to note, NASA has not created life itself in the experiment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oops. Yeah. That's why you have to read the whole paper. You cannot just read yeah. the, the headlines. Okay, we got time for one more. This is kind of a fun one. This Um, is a neat one. Antarctic flies protect fragile eggs with antifreeze. So these, (laughs) so there's not many things that live obviously in Antarctica, and these are flies that don't actually even have wings. So Um, they're flies that don't fly, and yet they call them flies. Yes. So, but fly with that one. From other structures, they are flies. (laughs) But they have, and actually this is based off some research at the University of Cincinnati. So it's actually a local university. Actually, the research was kind of cool. Yeah. You know, I really enjoyed the research. Yeah, so they've been able to find that they, the way they lay their eggs, they basically lay them with a gel around them that acts as antifreeze and keeps them safe. Yeah, they put insulation around them. I want that. Oh, you want that? Yeah, I'm freezing here. Are you cold up here? Yes, (laughs) I'm freezing here. It's a little different than Mm -hmm. Brazil, isn't it? Yeah, Uh, very different. Antarctica has a lot of... um, temperature swings and dry and it's very very dry it's it's a desert yeah. essentially yeah. in antarctica we don't think about that because we think of deserts being hot mm-hmm. but deserts just mean it doesn't have it doesn't have that humidity much, not, not it doesn't have water it's vapor. just dry yeah. yeah and very cold you don't have that either, but as, so. as as always they always have to throw evolution oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. and they say that here at some point in their mm-hmm. evolution the little midges lost their wings so evolution consists of losing things that's kind of the opposite you gotta gain them you yeah. gotta gain things <laughs> right. you know if you but start that's... with a single-celled organism and go to a cow you gotta yeah. gain information for skin and hide and circulatory system and a nervous system and so forth losing things don't help you it's going in the wrong direction for an evolution yeah but that's what we see in the data just yeah. losing information losing, yeah, yeah. It's kind of amazing. These things will even uh, survive after losing more than 70% of their water content, which is huge. We lose two and we can die. They can lose 70 and still wow. survive um, because wow. of these amazing designs um, that God has given them um, to be able is. to survive. Um, so is there like a practical conditions. application to this? You know, yeah. you want to you know, try to mimic that yeah, for good uh, insulation and things yeah. like that? I don't know. It'd be kind of cool. All right. Well, that's all we have time for today. So we will be back on um, Monday uh, with some of them that we didn't cover today and some new ones. So we'll see you then. God bless you. Bye.